Delanos, welcome you all to e-learning platform. Now we have reached week 9. In this week you are going to learn the summary of the whole book, Le Mort de Arthur by Sir Thomas Mallory, and a specific book summary from book 1 to book 4. Me first Lamed with you throughout this lecture. Let's begin. King Arthur and his Knights by Sir Thomas Mallory. Summary. The legend begins. Arthur is the son of King Uther, Pendragon and Igraine, wife of Gorlois, Duke of Cornwall. Marlin the Medician forced the king to swear a Solomon oath to allow Marlin to bring up Arthur as he chose. Marlin delivered the newborn and Christian child to Sir Hector. Sir Hector Christian the child and raised him as his own, not knowing he was the future king. Whoso pulled the sword out of the stone, and Anvil is rightly king of all England. King Uther died two years after Arthur's birth, leaving England in turmoil, a country without a king. Several years passed until all the lords of the realm gathered on Christmas Day, looking for a miracle to show them who should rightly be king. The sword in the stone appeared in the church courtyard, bearing the famous inscription, Who would be king? It was decided that a tournament would be held to determine who would win the right to pull the sword out of the stone. Sir Hector and his son, Sir Kay, traveled to the tournament. Sir Kay forgot his sword and asked his younger brother Arthur to retrieve it. Arthur decided to get the sword that was in the stone and give it to Sir Kay. Arthur becomes king. Sir Hector and Sir Kay both kneeled down to Arthur's and told him of his true identity. The lords are upset because they did not want a boy who was not of high blood to govern their country. The commoners finally cried out that Arthur was the rightful king and should be crowned. Arthur was first knighted, then crowned by the Archbishop of Canterbury. Arthur showed to his lords and commoners to be a true king and to govern with true justice. The land called Camelot, Arthur ruled in peace for many years. Guinevere, daughter of King Leo de Grams, married Arthur, Sir Lancelot, son of the Lady of the Lake, Arthur's first knight. Marlin, wizard and advisor to the king, other knights of the round table, Sir Gawain, Sir Galahad, Sir Percivale, Sir Bedivere. The Age of Chivalry Arthur and his knights practiced the Code of Chivalry. The Code of Chivalry are courage, justice, mercy, generosity, faith, nobility and hope. Le Mort de Arthur, the death of Arthur. Arthur is fatally wounded in a battle with Mordred. Arthur requests Sir Bedivere to throw Excalibur, his sword, into the lake. Ar After Arthur's third request, Sir Bedivere throws Excalibur into the lake while it is reclaimed by a lady of the lake. The Mortuary Arthur Sir Thomas Mallory started 
writing Le Morte de Arthur while he was in prison in the early 1450s and completed it by 1470s. Mallory was twice elected to a seat in Parliament. He also acquired the criminal record which included burglary, rape, ship stealing and attempting to ambush the Duke of Buckingham. He escaped from jail on two occasions, once by fighting his way out with a variety of weapons and by swimming a moat. Le Morte de Arthur by Sir Thomas Mallory is considered a precursor to the modern novel. It was printed a few weeks before the final battle in the War of the Roses. War of the Roses was the last English battle fought by knights in armor. It ended chivalry and the Middle Ages. The Tales of King Arthur, Le Morte de Arthur, Sir Thomas Mallory, The Once and Future King and the Sword in the Stone by T. H. White. Camelot a musical by Alan J. Larner and Frederick Lowy and King Arthur by the Marvel of the Sword King Arthur the Marvel of the Sword written by Mary MacLeod Now the book summary from book 1 to book 4. Book 1 summary. The tale of King Arthur. The birth of Arthur results from King Uther's deceptive bearing, which is really a rape of Arthur's mother. Igrain, Marlin, who arranges with Uther for the satisfaction of his lust, is promised the child that results. After Arthur's birth, Marlin sends the child to live with Sir Ector. Two years later, Uther dies, and Marlin secures the dying king's promise that Arthur shall be king. With Uther's death, the kingdom is in disarray with Several of the barons struggling to gain control. Marlin and the archbishop arrange for a gathering of the lords. When the lords arrive, they find the sword buried in a stone. Upon the stone are the words, Whoso pulleth out the sword from the stone, and anvil is duly born, king of all England. None of the men present can budge this sword, but Arthur, who mistakes the sword for the sword mislaid by Kay, easily pulls the sword free. However, the lords do not wish to be ruled by a boy and resist proclaiming Arthur king. Eventually, however, the lords agree, and as king, Arthur is successful, ruling equitably and Cautiously. When Arthur has himself crowned king of Wales, the husbands of Uther's three daughters, who are themselves kings, arrive for the coronation. But instead of arriving to celebrate with Arthur, King Slot, Nantres, and Urians arrive to make war. Although Marlin tells the three kings of Arthur's heritage and arranges a truce, Marlin returns to Arthur telling him to attack because destiny is with him. After his easy victory over his enemies, Arthur meets and falls in love with Guinevere. Arthur also creates a child, Mordred, with Lord's wife, whom Arthur does not realize is his sister. Soon Marlin appears disguised, first to tell Arthur that he is Uther's son, and later to tell Arthur that he has lain with his sister and created a child who will destroy him. When Arthur loses his sword in battle against Sir 
Eleanor, Marlin leads Arthur to the Lady of the Lake, where Arthur promises a later gift in return for his sword, which will protect him as long as he wears it. In a final effort to secure his kingdom and himself, Arthur orders the deaths of all high-born children. Born on May Day, but the reason for this order, Mordred survives. And in his stead, Arthur incurs the wrath of his lords. Marlin has had a part in every event that has shaped Arthur's life, although he does not yet know this. The story now shifts to an emphasis on revenge. As a magical sword is used by a newly released prisoner, Sir Berlin, to slay the Lady of the Lake. When Sir Berlin attempts to win back Arthur's favor, he accidentally kills Lancelot of Ireland, one of Arthur's men, and is responsible for the suicide of Launcelot's sisters. Soon, another battle with King Lord ensues, and Palinor kills the king, and Arthur manages a great victory over his enemies. Marlin Worlds warns Arthur that he must guard his scabbard, and that the women to whom he gives it will steal it. Arthur gives it to Morgan Le Fay, his sister, who gives the scabbard to her lover. After many battles, Balin dies in battle with his brother, the two having killed one another by mistake. Marlin fixes Balin's sword so that no man can use it except for Launcelot or Galahad. Against Marlin's advice, Arthur married Guinevere. A dory is the round table, which seats 150, the seats of which Marlin fills with as many knights as he can find. One of the new knights is Lord's son, Gawain. After some minor skirmishes, Arthur establishes the new code for the knights of the round table. The new code demands that the knights be merciful, righteous in their battles, and honorable toward women. Book 2 Summary The Tale of Arthur and King Lucius This book recounts the battles between Arthur and Lucius of Rome. Lucius has demanded tributes from Arthur, who refuses. Arthur promises war and is supported by his knights who are eager for an honorable war. Although Lucius is warned of Arthur's strength, he chooses to attack anyway, leaving his grieving Guinevere behind. Arthur leaves England for Normandy. The battles begin earlier than planned, after Gawain and King Bors precipitate a clash with the Romans. In spite of their lack of preparedness, Arthur's forces destroy the enemy with Gawain emerging as a heroic figure. Arthur next sends Lancelot and Cado to deliver the Roman prisoners to Paris, but Roman forces ambush them. Lancelot proves himself a hero, and the small Force defeats the Romans. Lucius, Lucius's men beg him to end the war, but the Romans choose to attack yet again. This time Arthur vows to take no prisoners. Killing every one of his enemies in the battle, Arthur is crowned king of Rome, while he apportions the city's well. Soon Arthur and his men return to England and their wives. Book 3 Summary The Tale of Sir Lancelot du Lake After his victory in Rome, Lancelot returns to England, an honored and heroic knight. This book retells 
relates Lancelot's adventures which embody the ideal heroic knight and the code of the round table. In the first of the episodes related here, Lancelot is asleep under a tree and Morgan, Le Fay and three other ladies find him. She uses magic to return him to her castle. However, the women demand that he must choose one of them or he will die. Lancelot is saved when he promises to help Sir Bagdemagus in a tournament. On his way to the tournament, Lancelot fights and owns another knight who has attacked him as he rested. After he wins the tournament, Lancelot is guided to Tarquin who had earlier captured Lancelot's nephew. Lancelot kills Tarquin and has all of the prisoners released. He next kills a thief and rapist who had been attacking women before moving on to Tantazil Castle where Arthur was conceived and where Lancelot kills the giant that had been attacking women. Lancelot kills Tarquin and has all of the prisoners released. He next kills a thief and rapist who had been attacking women before moving on to Tantazil Castle where Arthur was conceived and where Lancelot kills the giant that had been attacking women. As his adventures continue, Lancelot gives his armor to Sir Kay to protect him. And when a maiden seeks his help, Lancelot willingly risks his life to do so. He even agrees to help a lady who deceptively attempts to have him killed. Soon everyone knows of Lancelot's many heroic deeds. Book 4 Summary The Tale of Sir Gareth Gareth is another of Lord Sion and the brother of Gawain. He is the perfect knight, more humble and pure than all the other knights. <coughs> when this book begins, he is working as a kitchen boy and has adopted the name Biwa Mine. Sir Kay is angered that this kitchen boy whom he has always distrusted is made a knight and that he is given an adventure which is to help the maiden lean it. However, when Sir Kay follows him, Gareth says his case is spare and shield. After several adventures and the defeat of many criminal types, Gareth proves his ordinance to be a knight of the round table. Finally, after a tournament in which Gareth unknowingly fights his brother, Gawain. Gareth is married to Leonessi, to whom he has been a devoted suitor. That's all for this week 9. Thank you very much for being with me.